Hello, and welcome to another episode of Legacies Allure, brought to you by MTG Training Grounds, the educational series dedicated to providing you with all the info on popular decks, strategies, insight, and more for the Legacy format. I'm your host, Zachary Cuck. The King is dead. Or is he? In a very controversial decision, Wizards of the Coast has made what may perhaps go down as one of the biggest bans in Legacy history. On April 24th, 2017, Sensei's Divining Top was banned in the Legacy format. To many people, Top was the linchpin card, often considered too powerful for the format, that propelled the Miracles deck to the rank of the best deck in Legacy. The deck functioned night and day differently when it had the versatile artifact in play, and many people, me included, assumed that this was the death knell for Magic's last bastion of draw-go control. It may be too early to say, but it appears, however, that this may not be the end of the Titan's reign. Joining the show today to discuss the banning and more is a former Miracles pilot, aficionado of control, and legacy enthusiast. To his name, he has one Star City Games Open Top 8, two Star City Games Open Top 16s. He is the winner of the Eternal Extravaganza uh, number 6. He is a commentator on the Snapcasters podcast. And finally, he is a member of the Legacy Premier League, the brainchild format showcasing event of former Legacy Allure's guest, Julian Knob. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming today's guest, Anurag Das. Anurag, welcome to Legacy's Allure. Zach, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, looks like we have quite an exciting episode, um, so I think we should just dive right into it. I agree. Now, now before we get to that, uh, I think there's one more thing. Uh, you are a, a Twitch streamer as well, correct? Yeah, yeah. I uh, stream three times a week or so. Um, you guys, you know, for ever, anyone interested in watching some some fun times with um, a lot of mag magic stuff, you can check me out at twitch.tv slash Anzi104, that's A-N-Z-I-104, usually on Monday to Wednesday, 6 to 8 p.m. after work. Yeah, I think I, I uh, watched one of your, like, what do they call it? It's like a rebroadcast where you watch it in uh, after the fact, and uh, mm. I think you were trying out some new miracle stuff, or, or the, the new miracles, which we'll get to later, uh, and <laughs> it, it looks like a lot of fun, so. Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, so topic number one, and and this is a, a big. I mean, we're 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 a few weeks late even talking about it here on the podcast, but but better late than never. And and now we actually have some data sort of to back to back up the episode. Sensei's divining divining top, sorry, is banned. So, first of all, let's let's get your let's get your thoughts on the matter. Why did they ban top? Um, well, I think Wizards cited two reasons. The first one was that you know. And this is something that everybody has been saying for a long time. It's just that Sensei's Divining Top um, just caused tournaments to go on for too long. That's why it's banned in modern. You know, you have um, in, in in over the course of one game, one match, you'll probably see Miracles players like spin top, I don't know, like at the minimum 30, 40, maybe 50 times. Um, and just like over tournament, over tournament, over tournament, the time it actually just like adds up. And to a certain degree, you know, you have to ask yourself, is this reasonable? Should tournaments be taking, you know, what, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours longer than they should because, you know, you go to time every single round? Well, you know, for commentary reasons, for logistic reasons, the answer is no, they really shouldn't. And the second reason is that, honestly, the, the card, the deck, Miracles, was just too powerful. It was just absurd, you know? Um... For the past three years, if you checked out, you know, the source, the MTG, the source, you'd see that Miracles ranked number one as the deck to beat. You know, my roommate, Bob Wong, a Delver player at heart forever, you know, he even resigned the Delver mantle to play Miracles, you know, saying that the deck was just too good not to play. Mm -hmm. And at the point where, you know, the the deck is just that is really good where, you know, the, the inherent combo of Sensei's Divining Top and, and Counterbalance to create that counter top lock would, you know, just like oppressively shove out a huge portion of the deck, would skew the meta, you know, in so many different ways that, you know, either you're forced into ignoring, you know, Counterbalance, you know, by playing things like Cavern of Souls and Chalice of the Void, or, you know, you're locked into playing Abrupt Decay, that sort of, you know, effect or shadow that, you know, Sensei's Divining Top plus Counterbalance Plus just the whole Miracles archetype in general cast over the format, not really a good position um, to be in. So that's that was their justification. I definitely see where they're coming from. And part of me definitely does agree with it. 
Yeah, so I, I, let's move right into my, my next question then is, um, given that they that they listed uh, several reasons, agree with them or not, do you feel that their ban was justified? So I guess it's a subjective question in nature. I definitely think their their first two points are valid. You know, the deck is takes too long and it's overpowered. But I think so. This, there's a lot of questions that you have to ask yourself now. The first question is, you know, is it you know, Sensei's divining top? You know, the right card to ba uh, ban and if so, is the reason correct? Um, there are two ways to look at it. I think the reasons... I think maybe the choice in particular to ban Sensei's Divining Top is questionable. I'm not saying it's incorrect. My mm -hmm. gut reaction is that I'm I'm sad because obviously, you know, I've played this deck for years on end and, and you know, I've talked to a lot of people who also play the deck and, you know, you sort of create this, like a, you have this emotional bond with the deck after mm -hmm. you've been so deeply invested into it. You know, you spend a lot of money and time and effort and to have the, you know, the deck just suddenly destroyed because, you know, one card is taken away and that linchpin card, like you mentioned, it's, it's, it's pretty sad, but... I think um, what I would have done rather is maybe start off by banning other cards in the deck. So let's say instead of banning Sensei's Divining Top first, I would have probably taken a look at, you know, what happens if we ban Counterbalance? Is this Sensei's Divining Top slash Terminus Miracles archetype still, like, you know, oppressively strong? Or, you know, maybe we take the other approach. We say let's ban Terminus instead and see if, you know, Sensei's Divining Top and Counterbalance by themselves is, is that too strong. Um, the reason that I think it's important to take a look at these other cards first is because it's not just exclusively Miracles that play Sensei's Divining Top. Sadly, there are a bunch of other decks that are now a, a lot less playable mm -hmm. that, you know, relied on Sensei's Divining Top as like a col colorless so um, source of filtering. So, for example, let's take a look at, you know, the the mono-red um, Painter Grindstone deck yep. um, that typically used cards like Goblin Welder, you know, Phyrexian Revoker, Enlightened Tutor, um, alongside Sensei's Divining Top to sort of, you know, create this really powerful combo that was resilient through, um, you know, a lot of hate, um, was, you know, reliable to a certain degree because you had top to, you know, spin, yeah. okay, you don't find what you want, fetch away those cards, spin again, okay, now I've got the combo, kill you, that sort of thing, right? Um, you also look at a deck like a, another fringe deck like, like you know, twelve posts, 12 which posts. used yeah, which used you know, Sensei's divining top, pretty liberally. Um, yeah, I mean, so now like those decks. So you know, one of my twelve post friends says that his deck is just no longer the same. You know, I have another friend who's who's just off off painter because it's it's not playable. Um, one of the saddest things post ban was that I logged on to Magic Online and I played against Utley twenty six. Um, who, for those of you who don't know, is Jack Kitchen, arguably the best pa uh, painter player, you know, out there. Mm -hmm. And he was casting Dark Rituals. So you see, like, a lot of things are changing here as as um, you take Sensei's uh, Divining Top away, not just from the Miracles deck, but, you know, the splash damage to the rest of the format. Yeah, and, and I agree with you there that, like, the the top... Sensei's Divining Top clearly was, like, the Miracles card. Like, it... it really was was ma what made the deck functional um mm -hmm. and and banning it is is without a doubt going to have the effect the wizard wants like it's going to it's going to end the the prolonged tournaments it's going to um knock uh, the like the big control deck of the format down a peg it will no longer have the power level that it did even if even if a new control ver variant e even using the miracle mechanic or anything um fills the void it, it almost certainly cannot be even comparable like it's gonna it's gonna be weaker without a doubt like it just it just can't be as good but the the like side effect of this is like you said decks that were using sensei's top a lot more honestly um are, are just like collateral damage there like they they get hit even even though they didn't really do anything wrong right like they weren't the ones that were spinning it 50 times a match they probably like like 20 or less because they were combo decks, right? Or, or, or more or less combo. They were mana ramp decks that like could take advantage of a little bit of filtering for in the short term. And then, and then they just ended the game. Whereas like a lot of the criticism of miracles was that like they didn't end the game in a reasonable time frame, and they, mm -hmm. they just sort of spent, spent too long spinning wheels. So, um, yeah, so, so that, that's definitely one of the, like I said, kind of a, a side effect of the ban, um, uh, from from my side, I I feel like the the reasons they gave are are justified 
Um, but and and that that sort of is Wizards' approach to things in in a lot of cases. Not not all, or not exclusively. I, they they definitely have don't have like a super firm precedence for this. But but they do you know they they try at least in in a lot of cases I think to to follow some sort of precedent and attacking sort of um, the enabler or the card yeah. that, that causes the problems instead yeah. of the the like ancillary pieces is is their should or would be their approach. Um, now that, like I said, there's a lot of people are going to argue that that's not, uh, that's not true because cards like show and tell still exist <laughs> and, and clearly that's like an ongoing problem or has been for a really long time. But, um, I guess in the world of legacy, they don't view that as being too much. So, right, right. No. And I, I think that you, you're talking about that. That's, that is the actual word that everybody around me is saying, you know, like enabler, um, you look at their previous bans, right? They've stopped Splinter Twin. They banned Treasure Cruise. Basically, like, whatever is, I guess, just the abusive card, that's the one that goes. Like, even, so, and this comes back to whether, you know, you should actually ban Sensei's Defining Top or Counterbalance, because if the if if the the real card that is, you know, skewing Legacy is, is for example, Terminus, which, when you think about it, the card is pretty absurd. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 a one mana wrath that doesn't even put creatures in the graveyard. It just you know it puts them in the bottom of the deck. So you can't like you know use graveyard mechanics. You um, yeah. it's just like a laundry list of things that I mean like the amount of tempo you buy back by resolving Terminus is just absurd. You know you you spend one mana when your opponents have spent like two, three, or four mana, which is a lot in Legacy, as I'm yep. sure you know oh, yeah. um, you, you know. And then. You know, even if Terminus is the card that people are, you know, actively just struggling to beat, and maybe not necessarily Sensei's Divining Top, because I mean, again, there are a lot of there are a lot of um, um, decks that you know Terminus just knocks out of the park. You know, for example, like Zoo. When's the last time we've seen that deck? You know, you can't you can't reliably play creatures out when you know for the price of one mana, all your efforts are are moot. Um, I mean, so yeah. What I'm, going back to what I'm saying is, even though Terminus potentially may have been the abusive card, you know, Wizards is showing that we have a certain procedure. That procedure is ban the enabler. Goodbye, Sensei's uh, Divining Top. Right. Yeah, and then I agree with you. The 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 real offender. And I guess it depends where you want to like place blame because like the countertop decks existed long before miracles, right? Like that that mm-hmm. was still a valid strategy back when it was like countertop with Tarmogoyf and and some other hard counters and you know probably yep. swords of plowshares or bolts or however you wanted to do it like you were using it as sort of a a um a was pres- it fire a pr- spout so yeah. my, my uh, magic yeah. history is not so great but yeah I, I unfortunately didn't start playing legacy until about three years ago so like i've heard all the stories but uh, and the horror stories but but not <laughs> um not i didn't experience some of the decks like I, like survival was gone by the time i was there and apparently that was a, a big a big deal too um yeah uh, I, I would still argue, given the out la- or the outcry I've heard, that this is a more controversial ban. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Miracles yeah. wasn't near as uh, um, pervasive, I guess, as survival decks were. But but I mean, who, who knows? Uh, yeah. the, the point is though that um, they they again have gone after the enabler card, and and if it was just counterbalance and sensei's top there may not be an issue because you you right. still wouldn't have sweepers and 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 terminus is the card i think that really that like turned miracles from or or like a countertop control you know pseudo prison style deck into a full on control deck is when they got access to what has existed since alpha is counter spells and a wrath of god like when you have yep. those two <laughs> in tandem and they're both efficient enough and and like um easy enough to use like yeah efficient that's the word i wanted um that that is really the point when like a control deck thrives and and miracles did that so uh f- well f- for better or worse they they finally decided that the enabler was was worth banning so yeah and and I will say one more thing and this is just sort of like a side note but one thing I really do appreciate though is that wizards I mean they actually listened which is which is kind of you know big because um I mean sensei's divining top is People, people were just not happy. You could visibly, like I have, I've had so many friends that have just been saying, you know, I don't look forward to legacy anymore because Miracle is just so dominantly oppressive. So I'm really excited that I'm really happy actually that you know Wizards, you know, responded to you know all this sort of disdain and and acted appropriately. Like whether or not I think I think um, the ban is good, bad, left or right, I am glad that you know Wizards actually like you know opened their ear and you know reacted in some way. 
Right. No, I, yeah, I can get I can get on board with that. Um, yeah. So uh, while we're talking about <laughs> basically one of the uh, the bonuses or the pros and cons of of banning the card, wh- what do you feel are are the pros and cons of the ban, both um both for the f- legacy format and just for for Magic as as a whole? Well, so I can tell you for the legacy format, first of all, with miracles being gone, g- gone. Um, <laughs> Everything just seems to have, you know, like that the table flip emoji. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Just like it's like a whole new world. Like I'll I'll just quote all these movies. Um, no, I, I think I think things, <laughs> I think things change so much that it's really really hard for me to say that legacy will be the same as what it was before. That being said, I also think that players have learned a lot through the years that Miracles was legal, and we're gonna see like a sharper version of Legacy than we did before Miracles was. Better so, you know, just to explicate. For example, one of the greatest innovations to Miracles was the addition of four ponder into the main deck, um, which you know just boosted consistency. That's one thing that I see. I, I foresee like blue decks maximizing on, and in 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 that same way, I think a lot of unexplored cards, for example, like Winter Orb, or you know, like these threshold decks, or you know, just like the way that elves decks have um, you know sort of adapted to beat. Miracles, there's a lot of things you can um, take and apply moving forward, I think. You know, you just get exposure to a lot of cards. Um, That being said, there's a... There are, there are definitely a bunch, like, there, there are clear winners from this ban, and there are clear losers from this ban. And so I don't know if this is the next topic, but I, I definitely think that... Um, a lot of the decks, like there's a general pattern that we're going to see here, but a lot of the decks that succeeded or are happy with this ban are the ones that, you know, just generally got destroyed by miracles. So right. I'm talking elves. I'm talking like Stoneblade, for example. Well, okay. And obviously this is this is purely my opinion um, mm-hmm. in terms of like, you know, the miracles matchups. I'm sure, you know, there are a lot of players out there who, who may disagree with me, but, you know, matchups that I definitely enjoyed were, you know, Stoneblade, elves. Um, any anything basically where you know the counter ba- the counterbalance lock will shut down your deck or you know where terminus is just absurdly good and surprise that's like a lot of matchups you know I'm talking like game one against storm when I have countertop in play you know that sort of thing like I feel I'm like, super excited about stu- super ecstatic about as a miracles player um, and all these decks no longer have to worry about that so right. I mean you, the way they sort of like you know skewed themselves to beat miracles well they can undo that sort of hone in on what exactly you know the rest of them like because miracles was i mean like only 10 maybe 15 percent of the meta but its dominance like it was so good that it would always be in like the top tables and therefore if you ever wanted to you know go into an event top eight and win you had to have a solid plan for miracles and the problem is is that it was so hard to hate miracles out that you really just had to like pervert your deck like in a way that was it's just like unreal. For example, Storm at some point was playing, you know, multiple copies of Tendrils of Agony, four abrupt decays, two cross and grips, just for like one deck. I, I think that's just asinine to a certain degree. So I'm 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 happy that you know these decks get to unwind and sort of play magic as they were initially designed to do, rather than play magic against miracles, right? Yeah, so so I, I... Um, this is this is a topic that I know this is a legacy podcast, but this is a topic that has come up a lot in um, in the other formats. It's really really notable in standard nowadays. If if anybody still plays that, um, and and you see it some in <laughs> you see it some in modern as well. But um, in those formats, um, the control decks they they have tools, and and in almost every iteration of those, especially standard, you can build a control deck to beat like the other tier one deck or, or the other two tier one decks, right? But there's going to be a whole host of like, of other like one and a half to tier two decks that like, you can't build your control deck to beat all of them. Like it's just, it's just too difficult to have enough answers to everything. Um, mm-hmm. and, and you see that in modern. That's why there is, in my opinion, there's no real control deck in modern. There are some like, well, there's like the lantern deck, which is more of a prison deck. And then you have some folks who who cling to the, the Jeskai style decks where they think, you know they can if they just have enough removal they'll eventually kill everything but but <laughs> there's just like 
there's there's too many things to answer and they come in too many uh, flavors and too many varieties that you can't have a good answer to everything. That was not the case in Legacy. I feel like that was actually probably part of what made people hate Miracles so much is that it was even the decks that were like, air quotes, good against Miracles, even they at times I felt struggled against Miracles. So like there was no, there was no good foil to the to the deck like right when yeah, you have a control I mean, deck that, that has no predator then it it just after a while what, well what we saw happen is it just like it takes over it becomes it becomes the most refined version of itself that it can to just beat everything yeah I, and i know this sounds pretty crazy but just my experience as a miracles player there are, like at the end of legacy there's like i can't even count like five cards that i like especially care about like i think maybe like winter orb chalice of the void and emrakul the promised end were like the at the top of my list of cards or i mean not even emrakul like besage you like just like but like a bunch of random like super 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 narrow cards that would never see play in legacy otherwise like there there's really nothing that i was truly truly afraid of and at that point you're sort of like you're just breaking the definition of what control is because when you think about control, like by definition, you're controlling something, right. and that something implies that well, there's like just like a meta to it, right? So it should never, it sh something should never be replaceable with everything. And I think maybe that's where miracles got to. I mean, it was just so good. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it, I think you, you had a sort of a, a side effect uh, to it too, because like when when miracles first became a deck, and and the the whole like all the pieces were sort of cobbled together it wasn't refined enough so there was still there was still like some holes in the plan and you could mm -hmm. exploit those for a while but they they would start closing those gaps and eventually they had basically closed off all of the like fees what i'll call the feasible holes like the ones yeah. that people could actually try and exploit so then the decks like morphed themselves to to either ignore miracles which was a mistake or at least in my opinion it was or yeah. they would they would like morph themselves to exploit the fact that like there was a few very corner case decks and they would like 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 the only decks that could exist were ones that that had like a 50ish percent matchup against miracles and then could obliterate everything else so yep. so even though miracles maybe couldn't couldn't answer every deck in the format like maybe big mana like cloud post style decks or tron style decks could have could have really put miracles in its place all of the other decks that existed that could maybe hold like a 45 to 50 percent against miracles just push them completely out and and the big one here is delver like you can't have big mana decks when you have days stifle and wasteland as a deck <laughs> like, yeah. like that, so like yes tron could destroy could have destroyed miracles but they would never get through a tournament because like the delver decks would just obliterate them and they'd never have a chance so like yeah. the, the the natural predator of a control deck simply can't exist and that and i think that's what really gave miracles its edge is like any of the things that might have been a problem got like um exterminated by all of the other matchups and then you got down to the point where Miracles was just fine-tuned to beat all the things that could actually exist, yeah. like, realistically. So. Yeah, and I mean, and I think that's something that's really, like, crazy is that, like, even if Miracles didn't necessarily have, like, the best um, win percentages against, like, every single deck one by one, taking it into a tournament, you had the highest EV of, like going deep into the tournament mm -hmm. and doing well, just because you had such a good matchup against, quote-unquote, the, the other best decks and mm -hmm. like you like you said, all the the natural predator is just like irrelevant because legacy is just so like efficient. It's just so cruel when you try to do all these other like I don't know imaginative fun things. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we we've we've kind of already hit on the topic, but I want to just uh, hammer it a little bit more just to to make sure we've we've really really hit or you know noted all the points here. So mm -hmm. from the miracles deck perspective. And, and I'm, I'm focusing mainly on Miracles because when I say Sensei's Dending Top has been banned, we really mean Miracles, like the deck mm -hmm. got banned, right? Right, right. Um, so what did losing Top mean to the Miracles deck? Like how badly has it been hurt? And and we'll get into the to the what what is the aftermath or what can the deck become? But for, sure. for the moment, let's focus solely on like how, how badly is the deck bleeding or can, can the hemorrhaging be stopped? And, and is, is it... Um, 
is it the end, basically? Yeah, so so here's my here was my gut reaction. Um it was what Monday the twenty fourth, ten AM, Bob messaged me, Bob messages me and he's just like, damn. And I'm like, what? What happened? And he's like, I can't believe they actually banned it. And I was just like, wait, what? They banned <laughs> they banned top? And then like through my head I was thinking, wait a minute, okay, so what do I do? And and GP Vegas was coming up and I needed a deck to play because, you know, I mean, obviously if you ban Sensei's Divining Top, the deck's not the same. And and then I thought, okay, maybe I can take, you know, the rest of the deck and cobble something together because, you know, this is what I know. But then I realized by banning top, you're effectively banning counterbalance because you can't reliably, you know, depend on counterbalance. And then you're also basically banning terminus because, well, you know, you can't set up, you lose so much power, you can't have the instant speed terminus, you can't fetch to dig for terminus as aggressively. And so I was like, wow, you know, the deck is just dead. Got to find something else and move on. And honestly, like, I was kind of sad because I, I, I checked out all these other decks and when you're playing the best deck in the format and then you have to suddenly go on to something else, something like, you know, I guess the next best or yeah. settling for mediocrity, basically, you're just like, wow, I just, I don't, I was actively not having fun playing Legacy. And then, I don't know, some pretty great things happened. And now I'm like, I'm just like gleaming. And so I guess maybe this will transition into um, like this, this new deck that we're talking about, like new miracles. And I got to say, like, I'm actually optimistic about GP Vegas now. Um, and so just like a little bit of history, um, I think the first... So Magic Online is a great tool because you get to test a lot. And you get to see everybody else's testing. And Wizards posted some results. And so, you know, we were, me and a bunch of friends who were just like, you know, pondering what to do um, post-ban. We were looking for like a decent control deck to play. So we, we went across a couple options. We went across like Stoneblade, um, you know, like leveraging black for like Thoughtseize to sort of control, um, you know, as best as we could. We, we went to Grixis looking at, you know, Fatal Push, Young Pyromancer Cabal Therapy decks. And, you know, nothing had the same power level. And then one day, Magic Online user Osmanaz Guni, I, I think he's a Turkish pro, I'm not sure, don't don't quote me on any of this, mm -hmm. five O's with this list of the super fascinating because it had four Brainstorm, four Ponder, four Snapcaster, four Swords, um, what is it, four Predict, four Counterspell, and then Kicker, it also had, you know, four Terminus in the 75, and, you know, the light bulb just kicked off in my head, and I was like, wait a minute, wow. If he's been able to 5-0 with this, maybe there's some potential here. Maybe there's something that we can work on. And like a couple weeks later, you have, you know, Caleb Smith, um, another Magic Online player. His name is, you know, White Faces. And then you have It Is Unfair, uh, Nicholas Lolly, top eight at like Eternal Weekend um, in Europe. And mm -hmm. they've both posted results with, get this, they've got the card Portent, mm -hmm. which is absurd because, you know, I was thinking, you know, one thing that, so, Harken back to what I was saying earlier, you know, you, you learn things as as you, you've you played Magic, you know, Miracles has, I mean, you, you can apply the lessons you've learned. And one thing that I learned was that consistency is just so, so, so undervalued. You see um, their decks in Legacy that play Brainstorm, but they're not playing Ponder. And I'm pretty, pretty sure Ponder is, I mean, it's not as broken as Brainstorm, but it's, it's, close, it's close to as broken as Brainstorm is. And... If I ever register a blue deck for a GP or any tournament, I will be playing four Brainstorm and four Ponder. That's how good the card is. So I was trying to maximize on that. And I was like, you know what else is good? Preordain. Um, and I played Preordain in some of the early, uh, uh, what is it? Control, control list that I was playing. And it was phenomenal. And so, you know, these guys suddenly shifted to Portent. So just just in case, you know, Portent is what? A sorcery from Ice quote Age. set. Yeah, Ice Age. There we go. And it's, it's like... It's like Ponder, except it's it's time shifted. It, kicker though, you can target your opponent. So you know, you look at the top three cards, you can shuffle on the next upkeep, you draw a card. You can also look at the top three of your opponent's library, um, which is phenomenal. We'll, we might get into that later. Now, um, it, it not only uh, looks at them, you can rearrange them, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you get a little bit of consistency there. And so they were, you know, 5 0 sorry, Caleb and Nicholas were 5 0 with these lists that had 12 cantrips, four terminus, and another card too, which was quote okay pun whatever unexpectedly like decent, and that card is unexpectedly absent. The speaking commander of which, card, yeah, yeah, the command the commander card. Um, speaking of which, the the one that I gave you, the foil copy that I gave you, did you know it has since doubled in value? Ah, um, so you want it yeah. back now? 
no, 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 God, no, you can keep it. No, that, that was, um, yeah, that was, thank you for letting me use it. But yeah, that, that card is, is actually like surprisingly not bad. Um, it, the reason to play it in this, in this like, you know, new miracles list or whatever, is just that it gives you a little bit more consistency with, um, cards like predict. Um, and it's also just like a generically good answer. Um, because you can balance anything in response to a fetch or whatever. It's just extra, extra answers. So you're basically increasing your consistency by playing more, more of the same sort of. Right. Um, and and the card has been. I mean, it's it's held its ground. It's it's definitely not bad by any means, which is surprising because, you know, like here here's one thing that I, I that and maybe I'm just going off, but Sensei's Divining Top and Counterbalance was so powerful along with Terminus, that it just, like, shut down a lot of exploration uh, for the Legacy format. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you, you all these new cards that have been printed out since, you know, Miracles was a thing, a lot of people just couldn't play in tournaments because, well, checklist, did it beat Miracles? Was it good against Miracles? No? Okay, can't play it. Now we get to revisit these cards, and, and unexpectedly absent happens to be one of those cards that's just, you know, like, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Um... Yeah, and and actually, while, while while we're on that point, that that's something I've I've wondered about in the past is that, um, it, it, in addition to Sensei's Divining Top, and, and I don't want to get off on on a tangent too badly here, but <laughs> there, there's been a lot of people claiming that like, um, Sensei's Divining Top is not the only card that causes that phenomenon, that causes that like, um, narrowing of the viable card pool. Now, obviously, you can't like. Well, you can't ban your way into like a wide open format because mm -hmm. once you do that, then then you just like it, you never know where to stop. Like like yep. there's always going to be a, a a subset of the full set of cards that is the that is the best or the better versions of everything. So like mm -hmm. you have to have a really really unique reason to not play the consensus like best version of a card. Um, you know if 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 we'll just use ponder again. Like if ponder didn't exist. Port Portent probably would have already seen play because it's like the next closest best version of that, or, or at least yep. preordain, which is you know arguably arguably also very very similar. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and 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 like like I was get, getting to here is that there are other cards that still exist in Legacy that some people have said you know if you're going to take away this one thing that was that was super narrowing to the format the top then are you considering the follow-ons like th there's always been the, the the argument for brainstorm i personally i don't i don't want to see it because i actually feel that they're wrong i think brainstorm does the opposite effect it makes more decks viable than otherwise would be um mm -hmm. but that's just one person's opinion um yeah uh, uh, the other the other big one that i've seen on at least on the source uh was uh death right shaman it, for yes. the exact same reason that like you basically cannot play a lot of decks because Deathrite Shaman already invalidates them. So mm -hmm. so he he is or that it is sort of the next the next card in that in that lineup of things that just makes too many other strategies or too many other cards on or non-viable yeah. or unviable. Um now like I said, I don't wanna go off on a should we ban Deathrite, should we ban brainstorm this and that? That's like that's wizard's job and uh I try to keep the controversy on the show a little bit <laughs> to to a minimum. But the point you made that it it opens up the format to other cards mm -hmm. is is an argument we've heard not only about top but but have heard a lot about top but also has been made versus a lot of other cards and um we didn't mention that as like a justification for banning a card because in in, in a lot of ways in my opinion i don't think it is a great reason i mean unless it's so overwhelmingly oppressive that like nothing else is viable i don't like survival I, yeah yeah i don't think that's a very good reason to ban something um because like like you said, or like we said, you're always going to have like a best subset of cards. So like as long as right. they're not too best, or or that they aren't so good that they don't allow anything else to be played, I, I don't know if that's a great reason to to ban something. Yeah, yeah, and I think like they like we saw that with Treasure Cruise too. Like Treasure Cruise, like <laughs> Blue Red was like some absurd amount of the format, and yeah. you're like people were main decking Red Blast, and but yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, so. We were talking about oh yeah, so unexpectedly yeah. absent yeah. So cool, yeah, um, one thing that that I've I, I always actually wondered if unexpectedly absent was was kind of playable was that um, and I think you saw this right before the top ban right didn't Ilya Cassis play a singleton copy in his miracles deck 
And I, I the reason I, I, I always wondered about it was that it seemed like a half decent answer to the permanent types that Miracles occasionally struggled against. Um, the, the most notable of those being um, Planeswalkers, right? Oh, sorry, there was a lag spike again. Oh, uh, so, sorry. Um, unexpectedly absent ans answers the the card types that Miracles occasionally did struggle against, and, and mo most noteworthy of those is uh, Planeswalkers. Yeah, I think um, Planeswalkers were probably the strongest, followed by artifacts like Pithy Needle, Chalice of the Void, and then like enchantments like Sylvan Library, right? stuff like that, yeah. And and obviously it, the, the Miracles deck won't be around in the same capacity, but Unexpectedly Absent is a good answer to all of those card types. S somewhat the same way a card like Abrupt Decay is, Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's kind of like another colors version of Abrupt Decay, which is actually um, really exciting in a lot of ways. I think that like yep. I, I feel like for a long time, be, probably because of counterbalance, Abrupt Decay had to be your like catch all answer to a lot of things, and I believe it's still going to be because it is still a really universal answer to lots of things. Um, but it, like like we've sort of alluded to, I think this gives other cards um more opportunities to, to at least try and prove themselves as like a viable tool or a viable piece to, to to a deck strategy for sure yeah i definitely agree um i mean already in testing i can tell you that just being able to bounce you know like all right you fetch in response i'll get rid of your uh what's what's the most troublesome permanent that i can think of right now yeah sure whatever chalice of the void Always. sweet now i don't have to deal with it <laughs> although i don't know what deck plays special lands on chalice of the void agrolum side note whatever um <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> um and I, I think i just like the reason that it just wasn't played before was just maybe it wasn't considered as efficient enough because it didn't the downside to unexpectedly absent is obviously they might just redraw the card and then replay it again and like now wow you still have to deal with this this you know troublesome permanent whereas judgment council's judgment would just you know straight up boom get rid of the card permanently um but but yeah i know just i i think the card is is definitely going to be um it will be played at gp vegas in a non-zero amount i can guarantee you that I can guarantee you that because I'll probably have some copies in my 75, but you know, we're, we're not going to go too deep into that. Ely, if you have any more tech, please let me know because you come up with the best stuff. You've only got um, like, you've got like two weeks to figure it out. So <laughs> yeah. And, um, um, all right. So, well, before we go into even more depth about what the new, the new miracles, if you want to, if you want to call it that is, is, is going to, to look like, or where you think that's headed, let's quickly hit on, um, now that miracles, the, the the previous, the countertop miracles that well, mm -hmm. we'll just call it top miracles. <laughs> now that top miracles is gone, <laughs> what decks should be getting better? Now there, there there was clearly a spike in like what MTGO saw um, people mm -hmm. playing and what people sort of theory crafted. But let's let's look at the actual data, which I'm sure you've seen a lot of now that we've had a few uh, or a month or, or yeah over a month. Um, yep. What decks? Um, improved what decks should have gotten better and then and then actually did sure so in theory the the way it should work out is that the decks that were weak get weak to miracles those decks now that miracles is no longer a problem will become better the decks that prayed or attempted to prey on miracles like for example eldrazi will become worse because well one of their best matchups suddenly is just no longer in the format so in theory you have matchups like you know, Elves and Stoneblade, like I've cited before, those should get better. Whereas, um, let's see, like Eldrazi, Agro Loam. Oh, Lands is another theoretical winner because you don't have to deal with counterbalance on life from the Loam. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know, you know, Eldrazi, Agro Loam, just in general, Ancient Tomb, Chalice of the Void decks, those will get worse. Uh, Merfolk is another option. And then you have the decks that try to go like above, you know, like 12 post. Um, anything that's trying to hard cast uh, Emrakul, I guess. Um, anything that, oh, Burn. Burn used to, in my opinion, after the printing of Firecraft, was a pretty poor matchup for Miracles, or not like a definitely favorable matchup. I think that Burn is going to um, not, Burn is going to get a little bit worse, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, in, in so it, the way I say, and I, I kind of agree with you, some people would think, well, you know, Burn is all is a bunch of one mana spells, right? Like, that should have suffered terribly under the Eldrazi and um, Countertop style decks um but the, the the fact of the matter is that in those matchups well maybe not so much chalice but against the countertop 
style decks especially they they had a lot of time and like you said mm-hmm. there were cards printed in the last couple years um uh Eidolon, the great revel a couple more efficient beaters like monastery swift spear and then and then uh, exquisite firecraft that really gave them a huge shot in the arm against slower decks yep. um and and that's what we're not going to see as much i don't think is the slower decks more of the faster decks the tempo e decks will exist and while they're not like a complete underdog to things like Delver, they are definitely disadvantaged, I would say. Like, mm-hmm. the, the the tempo decks are good against Burn because Burn is, um, I think when we had uh, P. Sully on the show, he basically described it as like, it's sort of a combo deck. It's like a turn four combo deck, right? Yep. Like, it's pretty consistent if you don't interact with them, which is what tempo decks do. If you don't interact with them, they just consistently get you on turn four, sometimes turn three. So... So they actually aren't going to get burn. Actually, isn't going to get better, even though it might seem like, hey, you got rid of all the counter, like the countery lock decks. Um, right. And, and so, so I agree with you there. Another deck is is the one I play. Uh, in fact, is definitely definitely not happy to see miracles go because even though I can't say I loved playing it, I did always feel good playing it. And without mm-hmm. it around, I'm going to see more Delver, which I don't like. So. Who oh knows? yeah. Yeah. And so speaking of which, and this is going to make you a little bit sad, but looking at Mag- the Magic Online results, they are overwhelmingly polarized towards two specific decks. And I am pretty sure people listening already know, but the first deck is going to be Grixis Delver, the you know the Delver of Secrets, Young Pyromancer, Deathrite Shaman deck. And then the second one is going to be Ad Nauseam Tendrils, which is the, you know, the Dark Ritual Tendrils of Agony deck. Um, these two decks have been overperforming on Magic Online. And if you look at the... the, um, the top players you'll see that there's a uh, sorry within most number of five o's you'll see like you know grix and 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 storm are just the ones that are consistently up there um which is actually really interesting when you think about it because neither of those decks are in theory what we expected to do better right those decks before had relatively even matchups against um miracles but the, the, i think the thing to appreciate the most about them is that in the same vein that Miracles didn't especially have like a bad, bad matchup, these decks are just generic. Like they're just, they're good cards dot decks or extremely resilient, like in the case of Storm. Yeah. Like, I mean, Delver decks, you, there's no one card that you can tell me that hates out Delver. And Storm just has so many, like, it's it's just like a Swiss Army knife, you know, like Duress, Cabal Therapy, Preordained Cataxian Probe, Sideboard, you have all your answers to their answers. It's 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 a phenomenal deck. And when you think about it, it makes sense now that this deck and Grixis Delver would sort of just climb to the top. Well, and and actually, this is this is one of those things we we sort of touched on just a little bit earlier. And I think I think Storm is the is the real um, poster child of of what happens when you get rid of the best control deck. See, one of the few decks um, that I thought had a very str- very very strong miracles matchup was the the Eldrazi deck, the Chalice decks, right? Yeah. So and and I mean, it may have only been like. You know, maybe it was perception only. It may have only been like fifty-five percent, but it looked it always looked good against miracles, right? It looked oh, like, yeah. <laughs> like it was like if you didn't have a good sequence of draws, the deck just could run you over. And that's true for any deck, but miracles definitely I I played at miracles a couple a couple tournaments and I thought Eldrazi was really scary. I know, <laughs> yeah, right? No, no. <laughs> just I just admitted I am the monster, right? <laughs> no, um and so when you take away miracles, then like we said before, Eldrazi, the, the Chalice decks get worse. Well, Miracles wasn't the only deck that really suffered under under a a, a Chalice metagame. Uh, Storm did as well, and actually, I would argue Storm suffered even worse under a ton of Chalice yeah. metagame than Miracles did. So, with Miracles gone, not only does one of Storm's bad matchups go away, but it's one of its second bad matchups. Uh, Eldrazi also has less reason to exist, so it should come roaring back because the the two big um, fun police of the format that we're keeping st- well, if you're a storm player, if the the fun police are gone and now and now you know there's there's only the Delver decks to to contend with, which and I mean some people would argue that like Delver still has like a strong game against Miracle or against Storm, but but I think a really a really good or really well practiced well versed Storm player, somebody like Caleb Sher. He has often said to me that he thinks that the Delver matchups are are 
positive. Like they're not actually as hard as they as they look, but it mm-hmm. takes a whole lot of practice and you have to know exactly how to play those. And there's probably a lot of storm pilots who either are rusty or have only picked up the deck, you know, since since the, the rest of the format was the way it was that they didn't maybe get as much practice as, as he's had. So I think yeah. I, I agree with you. I think the on the online players probably have lots more experience in general. So like it sh- it should be it should be a top contender in my eyes, and I'm glad that the uh, the results agree. Yeah, and speaking about Caleb, oh my God, I don't know if you remember this. There was a match where he played against Rug Deliver. It was maybe Caleb against uh, one of the Jessup brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like the camera pans in on Jessup's hand, and it's like stifle, spell pierce. X blue counterspell, 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 and Caleb's like, all right, um, fetch, bait your stifle, do this, name the exact right spell for Cabal Therapy, and uh, maybe maybe it was blind, I don't remember. And then he just like somehow pulled out a win here, and it was so phenomenal, and and that's what I'm getting at. You know, Storm is a deck that's just so versatile, so it's, it is, it just really has so many options, I guess, um, given the number of cantrips and given like um, how open cards like Cabal Therapy are, mm-hmm. or... I mean, and also it's just the fact that you know, there's so few cards that actually matter against yep. Storm that, you know, you get a huge advantage being able to play through those cards. That that, that, that makes Storm kind of good, yeah. Yeah, every player that brings cards like Lightning Bolt to the table is just is just virtual mulligans against a deck like Storm. So, yeah, you definitely, you definitely get a huge advantage by via the deck building and deck choice process, you're just invalidating a lot of what your opponent is doing or planning to do. And mm-hmm. um, and it, on top of all of that, as if all those things, the versatility, the resiliency, and the, the, like, the invalidation of your opponent's strategy wasn't enough, you also have a deck that not an unreason or sorry an unreasonable amount of the time can just turn to kill you and if you didn't didn't have a forcible well you're just dead like there's nothing you yeah. can do about it yeah, oh no the worst the worst scenarios are when they go like turn one duress and you're like okay fine you took my force and then they go like turn to kill you and i'm just like that's just insane that a deck can do that congrats I mean, it's obviously yeah it doesn't it doesn't happen that often but like sometimes uh it's 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 a uh, it's pretty crazy um, but just going back to the initial topic, I think really the the takeaway is that two things happen. The first is that a generically good deck, or maybe maybe it's just like the best generically good deck, Grixis Delver, remains you know the be- one of the best decks currently. Um, in that there's no way to just absolutely hate out um, yep. you know like Days Delver Force Death Right. These are all great cards by themselves. You know there's no like one solution that just destroys them. So that generic deck is doing extremely well. And then the second thing is that rather than seeing like the immediate winners and losers of the band succeed, we're seeing the the winners against the winners and the losers against the losers do, uh, or sorry, sorry, how does this work? The, the winners, basically the decks that beat like, you know, Elves and Stoneblades, the, what we expect it to do well. And then the decks that also beat, um, the decks that beat Miracles, so like Eldrazi. Right. So like Death and Taxes may have had a good matchup against Eldrazi. Now that Eldrazi has gone down in, in in volumes, you know, Death and Taxes is also going to go down in volumes because that that good matchup, Eldrazi, no longer exists. So right. it's like a, like a level two splash, if you will, yep. um, of what we've seen rise and fall uh, in, in the Legacy metagame. Yeah, no, I, th- that was actually another another point I wanted to make is that um, I'm sure you, you saw the article... Uh, that that Julian Knob posted about uh, oh yeah the the metagame analysis from the MKM right the mm-hmm. and how um, apparently Death and Taxes prior like tier one deck to beat pr- arguably in, in in some people's minds the second or third best deck in the format um, yep. has has some really really pitiful results and I Stably. I don't I don't know how to uh, to take that because. I mean, I, I can't argue with the data. Like, you know, he, he analyzed it correctly, and it's all right there in front of us. But at the same time, the deck just... I, I can't see... I can't understand how it happened, because it, it doesn't look, at at the outset, like the the decks that are now popular sh- mm-hmm. should have shifted D&T's position, right? Like, right, right. It, it was supposedly decent against Delver, and it's supposedly pretty solid against Storm, and 
And those are the decks that took a big jump. The, the only thing that, that should have gotten a boost that it's really bad against is the true name Nemesis decks. Yeah. So so I, I don't understand how it got so much worse. But like I said, the, the data clearly seems to indicate that that is what happened. So Yeah, and I mean, if you think about it, like, let's say that if, if we just look at specific decks, right? Miracles beats what? True name Nemesis with... Um, What's the card? Uh, Stoneforge Mystic. That's one deck. Um, I think it was pretty favorable, favorably ahead against like you know the Reed Duke Bug style of deck. Mm -hmm. um, Elves, for example, is another deck that you know sort of came back after Miracles died. And all of these decks, they're not that easy for Death and Taxes to beat. So the forty percent win ratio that Death and Taxes is is showcasing, you know, after MK and Frankfurt. It, it, I mean, if you think about it, like wait way longer than you're supposed to you you might be able to piece together some you know reverse justifications for why now that being said you know it's not necessarily the case that the deck is dead um something that we saw happen you know while miracles was the king was that death and taxes actually you know evolved a bit playing fetch lands and a second color mm -hmm. to you know augment their list with cards like, you know, maybe Magus of the Moon or like Black Splashes for, you know, Orzhov Pontiff. And I even I even think Mark Koenig, um, who was Bara on Twitch, um, had a list with like Chalice of the Void. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a the point that I'm trying to get at is that there's a lot of innovations, whether it be going to a three color deck or, you know, playing Chalice of the Void in Ancient Tomb. Um I didn't like yeah, I'm pretty sure Anna Voltson also had some innovation there with Ancient Tomb. Mm -hmm. Um Point is, look, this is an initial result. This is what we're initially seeing. The great thing is, is that deck, deck, decks can always adapt. I think Death and Taxes is going to be a deck that's going to adapt and um, change into something probably far different than what it was before, probably for the better. Yeah, and actually that that that's, that's a really good point that I until now hadn't even considered is that um, in the vacuum of, of Miracle's departure, um, there was new decks that you know, people wanted to play that now like had, you know, the gates had opened, like they, they were let out of their cage, right? Uh, in, in a way. Um, there was also the, the, the decks that, that were already in existence that, that basically just got a boost from not having, not having the big control deck around. So, but, but probably nobody adapted yet or, or right away, right? So, right, so right. people probably just brought stock lists or, or, or very, very um, similar to what was the previous stock list. So there's, there's a good chance that, yeah, that's the case that like the other decks that, that were like, like the Death and Taxes list specifically, they hadn't evolved yet to, me to meet their new enemies. Whereas some of the other more proactive decks, like the Delver decks and stuff, didn't really have to adapt, or they, they haven't had to adapt yet. You know, they right. already had the proactive game plan, so they were they were the ones asking all the questions, not the ones being prompted for answers, right? So so when when you're in that position, you you inherently just have an advantage. Now, can can the other decks adapt and and you know meet their new their new enemies? We'll find out. I'm sure Vegas will be a really good showcase of that. So. Vegas is going to be sweet. There's going to be 15 rounds of coverage, and I'm so excited to go back and watch all of it. Yeah, I'm with you there. <laughs> yeah. Um. So one last topic. Oh let's, right. Okay. Let's talk about now. You already uh, uh, alluded to this some, but let let's talk about what is the futures the the future of the miracles deck. And obviously, we don't have like a hard and fast list. I'm sure you've done a lot of play testing, and you are you are anxiously getting ready to to showcase this new deck, but. Um, in in the 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 vacancy of of Sensei's Divining Top, it it seemed like for a, a bit at first that, that that people were trying to find a replacement. Like they, basically, they were trying to find a replacement for Top, and and there was a lot of a lot of things proposed. Most of them, even before they got tested, seemed terrible, and and lo and behold, they were. Um, but <laughs> but there was there was something unexpected. And that uh, that is the new, what, I guess what they're calling unexpected miracles, right? Or, un, un, yeah, I think that's what they've been sort yeah, of nicknaming you know, it. <laughs> unexpected miracles. I, I I like calling it unpredictable miracles, sure. just as like a direct contrast to what was there before. Um, but but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. This this deck has definitely blossomed in uh, in in the last month month or so, much to everyone's surprise. I mean, uh, I have a screenshot of one of my friends who has Miracle Determinus and his opponent 
who's on Bug Delver just says, Gasp, it's back! And, you know, it was, it was great. And um, I think this deck, I mean, first of all, we have to understand that it's day, it's all, we're, we're still, I think we're still on the day one, maybe the day two phase of the, you know, Legacy Without Top. So everything that we see right now is just like a pre- preliminary reaction. This deck is a preliminary reaction, and there is there's simply just, I mean, over the course of a format that is legacy, there's just not enough data yet whether to say that this is a good deck, a bad deck, or a you know left or right or whatever deck have you. But I will say this, my gut reaction is that this deck has promise um, to the point where I will probably be sleeving this deck up for GP Vegas, and um, yeah, I hope I do well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it it still leverages some of the most powerful interactions from, um, you know, its predecessor, Miracles. And I think the most notable interaction is that Terminus is still a ridiculous one mana sweeper that, you know, just generates so much tempo that you can dirtle around for a bit, you know, use cards like Predict um, uh, to, you know, cement some sort of card advantage. You still have, you know, Counterspell, OG Counterspell, which is, you know, like, you, you get a little bit of control aspects in this, and then suddenly, you know, you wipe their board, you damage Jace, and bam, like, we're back to where we were before, because, well, I mean, like, if also, if you think about it, like, Miracles didn't have Sensei's Divining Top every single game, right? Like, right. there were some games where you just had to value or jund out your opponent, or, you know, there are some games where you just, you know, you eventually work yourself up to that point. But the non-Sensei's Divining Top games were real, and the deck still won without Sensei's Divining Top. I mean, it's not like people didn't come packing hate within, like, you know, you know, Pithing Needle and stuff, where you shut yep. down top. So this is that world where we sort of explore that avenue a little bit more, and... I think it's going to be pretty good if if you are not. I, I definitely think you need to keep it on your radar for GP Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe not in the future. Maybe the deck does dwindle off when you know, like you said, Grixis Delver is going to sort of um, hone itself to have sideboard cards for this blue white deck. Um, we'll see. But for the for the the next month or two, expect this deck to be played. Um, have a sideboard for it. Awesome. Well, it's good to hear that. Uh, despite Watsi's best efforts they couldn't completely kill it yeah i know i'm 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 ecstatic i know a lot of other people are ecstatic i know a lot of people are not ecstatic um, <laughs> so we'll see how it goes i will say this though it is definitely no miracles deck um playing a card like portent you see some significant disadvantages compared to playing a card like since his divining top sure. um a lot of the power of terminus was that you know you could cast it at instant speed on your opponent's turn this is going to happen a lot less frequently there are still certain enablers like brainstorm and predict which will allow you to do that but it's going to be you know few and far in between is that the phrase or few and far between yep yeah yeah and so it's definitely going to be underpowered my hope is that this is a Miracles deck that is sort of in check, yeah. I guess. Um, but it would be hilarious if this turns out to be like an oppressively good deck, <laughs> just as good as Miracles. Yeah, so. I, I mean, really what you want is, you want it to be underpowered compared to, to top Miracles, but you mm-hmm. want it to be powerful enough to be a real deck. And and I, I mean, I don't even I don't even want to play against it, and I hope it I hope it makes it and survives and like is able to continue. Mostly because I don't want to see Magic lose its only true control deck. Like I would like it, it to still exist. <laughs> yeah, that that is one thing that I was really sad about is that in in no other format do you have an actual Drago control deck. I think, like you mentioned at the very beginning, with the banning of Sensei's Divining Top, the premier dra- the control deck like Drago control deck of of Magic as a whole died. Um, hopefully this deck, this new, this new miracles, this is, uh, a good replacement. I agree. Well, Anurag, the, the landscape of legacy has been put through major upheaval as a result of the top ban, but I feel like you and uh, a few others, uh, the f- former miracle pilots are, are weathering the storm well and showing great creativity and optimism despite it. Um, I'd like to personally thank you for joining us today for, for this episode of Legacy Zalore and for sharing your experiences, your knowledge, your insight, um, all of that into, into Magic's greatest format. Uh, Zach, yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was great. I love talking about Legacy. I love talking about Miracles or Terminus, whatever you want to call this now. Um, you know, if anybody has questions, anybody wants to talk, just, you know, 
for fun or whatever, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook again. You can also, you know, watch me stream the deck occasionally on, on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash unzi104. Um, the deck... There. Nice. The deck has a lot of promise. Um, we're going to see it evolve. We're going to see it adapt. We're going to see... Legacy is going to change. And it's going to keep changing. And I think it's going to change to the change to the change. And that's great. That's why one. That's why magic is great. Um, let's see how that happens. Zach, thank you so much. Yes. Yes. And thank you to all of our listeners and our viewers. It has been a pleasure to bring you this episode of Legacies of Lore. If you like what you heard today, please subscribe and like us on Facebook. Feel free to leave us feedback on our YouTube page, or you can message me directly at mtgtraininggrounds at gmail.com. I'm your host, Zachary Cuck. Thank you for joining us.